Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. All right, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. I got some plays for you today out of my Saints ebook. Uh, my full length video that I just released. Um, this is going to be the intro for that as well as a intro to uh, a couple of plays and a preview. I'll probably have some more Saints plays throughout the year because it's such a loaded book. The reason that I didn't put this playbook out first is because there's so many plays in it uh, that I really wanted to flush it out and make sure that I got everything. Uh, but this is definitely the longest uh, video um, ebook that I made uh, for sure. Uh, that's why it took so long. I actually thought about putting it out in a two-part series because it was so big. Uh, but all the information to get that is in the link uh, below in the description, whether you want to get it on my Patreon, whether you want to get it on my personal website, or whether you want to watch the full-length video right here on YouTube. All that stuff's in the description. Other than that, let's go ahead and let's get into it. Uh, this formation here has been one of my favorite formations for a couple of seasons now. Uh, but the Gun Empty Y Saint is just absolutely loaded. I have a couple of really good plays here. I don't know which one to pick first, uh, but I'll pick one that I haven't uh, shown before the Saints Fork. This is a really good uh, play right here. This is, this is a very uh, hard to cover. Uh, it's got a lot of concepts really to beat any type of play you want to beat. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick that. Then we'll go, uh, we'll pick a random. You're probably going to see stuff like nickels and dimes because it has a running back and a tight end in it. So a lot of people aren't going to know necessarily uh, that's essentially a five wide look. So you'll probably, like I said, you'll probably get some uh, some nickel formations, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll pick dime just so I don't hear anybody complaining that I uh, ran against something. So let's go ahead and let's uh, pick that. Now, like I said, this is a wide open passing formation, even though uh, when you're, you know, the opponent's trying to match personnel, they will see things like... Uh, tight end and running back so they might not necessarily pick something like a dime uh, but in this scenario um, I gave myself the toughest competition just so I don't hear anybody complaining uh, of what I'm running it against um, not a lot of adjustments the only adjustment I really like to make on this play is I like to put Peterson on a slant and the reason for that is real simple um, it's a it's kind of a delayed slant your user opponent will most likely be covering right to, uh, to where Fleener and Sneed are. They'll probably start off there, um, and then you know Peterson just comes open really simple uh, as, as an underneath option. Uh, typically, the middle of the field is just gonna be wide open because you're usually not gonna stick around and hang around. Uh, which is, you know, that's that's probably a good idea uh, for the user. Uh, there's no motions on this play. You can't motion anybody, uh, which is really unique because you can in a lot of other plays. I'll show you. But this particular one, you can't. Uh, if there's any other, uh, you know, fakes or changes I'd make, uh, if you want this route to be a little bit deeper, you can put this um, tight end on an out route, and uh, it just creates uh, what's essentially like a corner, uh, I'm sorry, a bench switch concept to the one side, which is an option. But ultimately, I think the best way to do it is just put Peterson on the slant. Um, he works really well with Ginn, and then you have Fleener and Sneed are working really well with one another. Uh, but like I said, if you want something a little bit deeper, uh, putting him on that is a good idea. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this flat. It's not It's not actually a flat route. Flat routes typically stop. He keeps going, which is nice. Uh, so, you know, if you do get a catch and run scenario, Fleener's a good, a good um, athlete, so he'll get uh, up the field a little bit. Uh, but I still think, you know... It's really up to you. I think uh, from time to time, I'll put them on one of these. You can also put them on a drag. A lot of people um, that are covering the middle really well uh, might uh, you know, drop back into Peterson, or they might drop back in again, and then that'll leave uh, Fleener open underneath a lot. Uh, that was just a horrible throw, but you can see it was open there. <clears throat> Um, but the drag's not a bad idea. If you have a really competent user middle linebacker, um, there's no way they'll drop everything back, and then there's no way um, that they can cover this tight end coming across the middle of the field. And then there's typically, even if it's a zone, there's nothing really there. Like that particular play was a uh, was a man coverage, which obviously it's going to beat that. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to keep rocking Peterson here. I actually could have waited for the triangle route, but I felt the heat a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll try to uh, continue to work uh, some of these routes. This drag route for the... Uh, for the tight end is going to get open a lot uh, better for a much better catch and run across the middle there. Yeah, if you if it's a cover too, I think putting him, leaving him how he is is really a good way to go. Or putting him on that out route will just get a little bit more if you put him on that out route. If it's a cover three, you can actually put him on a streak and he'll get open a lot of times right at the middle. And if it's a if it's a uh, man coverage, um, you're better off just putting him on that drag. Um, but there's uh, a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, and that actually looks like that same, that cover three I was talking about. As you can see, he's just right there. The safety drops down, he's gone. 
So most of my plays, you have somebody that's kind of, uh, you know, I always call it like my Swiss Army Knife player. That's going to be Fleener. You got to pre-diagnose what you're looking at to make him a, a play. I don't think I threw it to Ginn too much or Thomas. Thomas is a really good route against most things. Uh, let's go ahead and let's throw it out there. As you can see there, he splits between the safety of the cover three. Every route on this play is really good. I mean, I'll, I'll hit Ted Ginn next, the triangle route, if I get a good look, uh, which there I do. That was a cover two. He just comes in a little bit late. He takes a little bit while to get open. But he's still a really good play, and you can't disregard him, especially if you're a user. Yeah, I'm going to float it up this time. We've got a man coverage. second he makes that break, he's just a really good man beater. So that guy's open a lot, too. Pretty much every every play, every guy here is open. I mean, this is just a phenomenal formation. And this formation is not just in the Saints playbook. It's in a lot of different playbooks. Um, it just doesn't necessarily have all these plays. I know it. I'm pretty sure it's in the, the Chiefs, the Giants. Um, I'm not sure everyone, but uh, I know that they have their own variations. I'm not sure if this particular uh, play is in that, though. You'll have to check that out. It looks like we've got a nice cover four here as Peterson almost takes it all the way. Uh, well, I think that's enough. We'll go ahead and we'll move on. Like I said, this play here is phenomenal. It's flexible. You can do just about anything you want to do with it. And pretty much every route gets open. <clears throat> Yeah, if you like to pass the ball, I mean, this is just one of the better formations. There's so many good plays. Uh, the next play I'll show is the drive unders. We'll pick that. This play right here, not a lot of adjustments. Um, you have, um, you know, your corner strike on the one side, uh, which is, a, you know, a lot of people really like that. If anything, I actually think moving Peterson out sometimes is a good way to go. It looks like a man coverage, though, so it's not going to help too much. Uh, if it's a zone coverage, um, it's a good look. Now, if you have a linebacker covering Peterson, say they come out in a two-linebacker set, motioning Peterson out uh, is a great look because your linebacker typically won't motion out with him, and that'll just give him an extra burst to the sideline. Um, that's one way to go. But uh, other than that, I mean, Sneed's going to kill man. All these other routes are going to kill man. These are all really good man-beating routes like Fleener's and, uh, you know, Ginn especially. Those are really good man-beating routes. If you got to cover three, I would say putting Thomas on a streak is a good way to go. Uh, even though Fleener is a good cover three beater by himself if you throw it early. So we'll go ahead and we'll rock this one time. It says we get that man cover just like we were expecting at Sneed. Doesn't have the wheels to go, but there's a good play. Thought he would be uh, a little bit faster there. So we can go ahead we can put Thomas. I think putting Thomas on a fade route is probably a better way to go. Because like I said, uh, Fleener is already pretty good in the cover three. So now you have two options up that cover three seam. And you can basically just pass lead uh, Thomas outside. It's another man coverage. And you see how Fleener just makes a huge acceleration burst across the field. That is just such a phenomenal uh, route that he's running. Yeah, I think that putting Thomas on a streak might be a better way to go. So this here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try motioning out Peterson. I actually motioned out the wrong guy. It uh, doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and let's run it like, just like this. I don't want to take forever. So here we got that cover three. I'm going to pass lead it inside a little bit. And he's right there in between. And we'll finish this off with one of my favorite plays. The Saints goes whip. I love this play. Uh, it's been in the game for a couple years. Yeah, I've been using it, a lot of variations to this. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. This play right here, you can run it a couple different ways. You can motion Fleener over and run them uh, just like this with Ginn high and low. Uh, you can leave it just like this. It's pretty good just the way that it is. Or you can put uh, Ginn on a slant. You can motion uh, Fleener over with that slant as well. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I find that this is one of the better ways to run it. No matter how you run it though, uh, Sneed is a really good uh, cover three uh, beater, which it looks like it's gonna be, as I'm gonna pass lead it inside. Anytime you got a cover three, he's gonna be epic right up the seam there. So I'll run it a couple different times like this. What makes this play so good, Fleener is really hard to cover all the way to sidelines. Most users will not follow him all the way, especially when you have uh, the underneath route there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to float it up. I thought he'd get a little more separation. That's a really good linebacker in coverage there. All right, so let's run this a couple times. I'll, I'll try to mix in every different which way I see. If it's a man coverage, I'm probably going to leave Ginn the way that he is. I have no way of uh, telling here if it's a man coverage. Uh, that was actually, I want to say a cover two, but I'm not really sure. Uh, without motioning, it's kind of hard to tell if it's a man. This here looks like a cover three, though, so I'm definitely going to uh, hit that man up the scene again. Like I said, pass leading inside, away from that cover three corner is the best way to go. Yeah, you can put Ginn on a drag, too, and he'll come open underneath everything. As we keep getting cover three looks, I'm not trying to just keep beating the cover three to death. Uh, but if it's there, you have to take it. Yeah, if it's a cover three, I mean, this is like a 25-yard handoff. It looks like I'm getting it again. Uh, pass lead inside, and you can break them. I've broken those for such big plays and touchdowns like that. Try to have your fastest guy uh, right there. You see I'm putting Ginn into a drag quite a bit too. Um, that's a good option. Um, he'll come open underneath. It's just, ooh, oh, oh man, I could have made a play if I got outside that one guy right there. 
Um, that's just a good option. The slant is a little bit easier to use her than the uh, the drag. So if your opponent is using the middle well, um, the drag route's really good, and you'll get some nice catch and runs. It almost got more there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really good options here. I mean, the, the slant's really good against man. The uh, the zig route's really good against man, which it comes with. Uh, putting him on a slant is good against man, too. Uh, and a lot of times I feel the user will make the wrong decision if you put him on a slant um, and cover. You know, that, that makes it a little bit easier to decide which person to throw it to. Uh, but no matter which one you do, um, you know, this plays really good. Even with the motion, just like I said, be careful with that cover three. This looks like a cover three right there. Sneed's probably going to be the way to go. Um, that cover three is, is as easy as pitch and catch. So we'll go ahead and move on.